The brand new iPad Pro 2020 promises to like replace your overall computer, replace your laptop and do everything that you could want in just such a small package. But can you edit a full YouTube video using this thing? Let's find out. We're not gonna slam, I don't wanna break it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So it's no, it's no surprise that I love iPads. I have so many iPads, I currently own four. There's one, heck, there's one control in this camera right now. This is iPad mini, this is iPad number two. Um, so I love when they come out and I love talking about them as they release. And this is my iPad Pro 11 inch from 2020. Now we've done videos like this in the past where we've talked about iPads and I've said, hey look, it's no secret, it's no surprise that these things can edit video quite well. I've even edited 6K video from a Lumix S1H on the iPad non-pro that cost me like 300 bucks. These can edit. But what I really wanna find out today, and we kinda have all of this stuff set up as you can see, is I wanna see if I take my iMac Pro out of the equation, can I plug this into all of the same equipment and get it to work? So. We're gonna do that right now. I do have the iPad Pro keyboard right here. Um, that's like the one accessory that I always get. I am looking forward to the new version that has the trackpad on it. I think that's gonna be very exciting. So this is normally the dongle that I use on my iMac Pro to get everything to work. So we're gonna plug the exact same accessories into the iPad and see if we can get it to work. It's already plugged into my Magic Keyboard and my Magic Mouse, which, which is the keyboard and mouse combination that I use to edit my videos. And the app we're gonna use today, let's start the screen recorder, and the app we're gonna use today is LumaFusion because I do think that's the best version. I do think that's the best editing software that you're gonna get on the iPad as of right now. So we've got a big monitor here. This is a just a kind of a cheapo monitor that I use for my Windows machine um, that I bought at like Costco for like 150 bucks. So it's not the best like editing tool, but it's what we've got for today. Let's go over to LumaFusion. So the way we have it set up is, so I've got a full video's worth of content on this Samsung solid state hard drive. So we're gonna plug this into the hub. We had to unplug the uh, the power charger because I forgot that it was USB-C. Let's see here, we've got that working. Now, we should be able to just import the files. One of the problems that iPads generally have is their, like their file management is not great. So Samsung T5. There we go. So we should be able to find TED videos. GH5, the perfect camera. Huh, it's like we're using that right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take all of this footage, we're gonna import it, and then we're gonna create five minutes worth of video. I'm not gonna recreate the entirety of the video because I've already made it once, and it's a video that I really enjoy because I love the GH5. It's my favorite camera ever. So we're gonna open these 20 things and see how it works um, and see what kind of time frame we're looking at. We started importing all of this stuff. Let's see how long it takes. Okay, we did kind of break for a second because it was taking a while to import. So I did end up plugging the drive directly into the iPad to kind of speed the process along. It took about four minutes and it did import most of the files. It did give me a couple of errors with some of them. I assume if I was gonna have to do this for real, we would have to like do smaller chunks because I did have several finished videos. So it was about, I was trying to transfer about 15 gigabytes worth of information and maybe that's just too much to try to pull down through LumaFusion at once. This is the first time I'm doing this, so there are gonna be some hiccups in the uh, the overall workflow. So I do have enough B-roll. I've got some old footage that we can work with. So here is the main clip. This is me talking about how much I enjoy the GH5, because again, favorite camera ever. Look, look at that guy, that guy's crazy. Um, so let's see what we've got here. I like that um, you do keep the gestures from the Magic Mouse. Like the Magic Mouse, this is how I do all of my editing. Okay, excellent. The shortcuts are still the same, which is very important to me. So there's the, let's delete this. I mean, I, it's just super snappy. I mean, look at this. This is like 4K, 400 megabits per second footage. And it's just, it's just crushing it. Like my, there are computers that I own that are big computers that can't handle this kind of, that can't handle this kind of footage. So let's, can we? Let's do a little, let's do some quick, let's do some quick grading. One of the things that I don't like about LumaFusion though is you don't have scopes. I always try to trust scopes because every one of these displays, like every display, whether it's a camera monitor, whether it's the iPad monitor, whether it's the other iPad monitor, whether this TV or this monitor, they all look different. I do like to judge off scopes because that will lie to you, mostly. So let's add a little bit of contrast. Let's add a little bit of, whoops, not you. Let's move you out of the way. Let's add a little bit of saturation. And okay, I think that's good. So we can go back. We wanna cut on the snap, like Thanos. We kinda, we already did that for this video, if you saw. 
There we go. So sometimes we are gonna have to like rely on the touch screen, which I guess is nice that you do have the ability to still use the touch screen if you need to do fine tune movement. I have the pencil here, but I rarely use it. So here's another problem with doing this. When you use a LumaFusion and you have it plugged into an external monitor like this, it then defaults this to be the speakers and you can't change that. So we'd need some kind of headphones to get this to work properly, but I'm not as worried about the audio. I know this audio is good. I've edited this audio before. So can we, let's minimize that. That does that on real time. So I do like that. Let's see here. Cut, ooh, we started over, so cut. Something that I do wish this would let me is I wish I could click and then like, you know, drag the box. I wish I could click and select everything instead of having to single click on everything. So we'll cut that. Let's get a transition here in the beginning. So add, okay, add transition. So we do a crossover. Now we are on the GH5. So let's add some of the B-roll on top of it. Okay, so we can then sync this up because we know that here's the other click. So that is all that I wanna do. There, excellent. This is not, this is not that bad guys. Like this is, I'm actually really excited about this. Um, normally when I edit on an iPad, I'm always talking about like editing from the iPad itself, like for traveling. What I'm really hoping to do is um, actually use this just full time. Like the only thing I use my iMac Pro for is editing video. So if I can get this to set up and work that way, like that would be the best. Um, Cause I travel with this, I, I take my iPad with me everywhere. So, hey, look, there's the mini iPad that we're using to, for so many iPads. Okay, so we're able to, so delete. One of the nice things is you can continue to see what's like clicked on there. Can you see here? Can you guys see that? Can you see like right here? Um, it still shows the dependency. So click. All right. I think that looks really good. Like I think this looks Fantastic. The big problem we're having so far, I would be editing with headphones in if I wasn't making this video for you guys. Um, let's see, let's do some other B-roll additions. We can do an in and out. So we'll do in and out. Click. How do we get this in? So we gotta, there we go. But this is B-roll. So we take this and then we turn that off because we do not want audio from that. Man, the GH5 is it's still like my favorite. Oh, I get goosebumps talking about the GH5. We're probably gonna have to do another update on it. Man, look at that, that's an old video. Uh, so we'll click, delete. Okay. So that's just a quick showing of like all of the things that I drew. Ooh, let's add, before we say that, cause there are, we need to add an overlay title. So double click is a right click. So your text here, so let's change this up. GH5 is literally the best, exclamation points. Cause it's exclamation points are how you know, right? Um, you can add layers, shapes, stuff like that. And that's fine. Nope, sorry, this again. I don't like that the mouse support is tied to that accessibility thing, but here, let's see. GH5 is literally the best, exclamation point. Rah! That's how you know it's the best. Okay, so everything that I normally do, we saw you can do some color grading. We saw that all the controls continue to work. The gestures on the mouse still work. Um, everything seems to work really well. I was able to import off of my solid state drive. I've got Sony footage in here, which is the thing that I normally have problems with. This clip right here was shot on a Sony camera. So I think right now I'm pretty excited. The next step with the last real big thing we got to do is we got to export this. So we're going to export the movie. We'll export it to our photos. We'll do 4k video quality extreme. I mean, I think that's standard, but we will do that audio quality. Yes. Video codec MP4 export. Space needed 23 gigabytes. What does Final Cut, Final Cut probably does like way down there, but we're still gonna do extreme. Let's see how this works out. Actually, how long of a clip is this? So this is 12 minutes. So this is 15 minutes. So we're gonna do like a stress test. 
of a 4K 15 minute render time. It's writing, we'll, uh, we're gonna hyperlapse through this right now so you can see how long it actually took and see you in a second. I mean, I don't wanna jinx it right now, but this thing is flying. Like we haven't even gone a minute yet and it's already rendered a minute and 10 seconds worth of this. So it's going faster than real time. That's faster than my iMac Pro goes. I'm so excited about this. Like I can use all the same accessories. I can use the same everything. All I have to do is plug in the iPad and then I don't need to have that anymore because I'll just get an external monitor to plug into. I'm getting really excited for this. Really excited for this. Um, this new iPad OS support that they've got is crazy. Like we're at a minute now. We started 1228, it's now 12.29 and we're two minutes in. So this is going twice as fast as real time. I think it's slowing down a little bit. We're at three minutes and we're at four minutes of rendered. So I'm already impressed with this. I don't need it to be like that lightning fast, but if it can render at real time, that's that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty fantastic. Okay, we're about five minutes in and we're halfway, so we're at 731 of a 15 minute clip. And yeah, we started at 1228, it's now 1233. That's, that thing's lightning fast. Like, you're, I can almost, I can almost watch this little pie, like expand in real time. This is, this is an under a thousand dollar computer. Like this is, I know I say this every time a new iPad Pro comes out, but every time one comes out, I continue to be impressed as like, most of the time the iPad's thought of as what? Like a consuming device. Like I use this to control something. I use this iPad mini to control the camera. I use my iPad non-pro as like a word processing computer that I take around with me. But you never really think about content creation on them. And this, like this is going, so much better than on a MacBook that I've used before. Like the MacBook, I've used the MacBook Pro 13 a lot. I've used the MacBook Pro 16 a lot. This is going faster than that. Okay, so now we're at 10 minutes and it's at almost 14 minutes of completed render. Like this is going way faster than real time. I'm blown away. I'm so excited about this right now. Like I, so I don't actually own my iMac Pro that I have over there. It's on a business lease. Um, and that lease is up this year and I'm probably going to cancel it. I'm going to turn that thing in and I think I'm going to keep the iPad Pro. Now we will, that's a bold statement to make right after one video, but I'm a bold person, bold person alert. I'm not that, I'm not that bold. 11 minutes to render that file. It took 11 minutes. That is crazy. So we've now, I think we've shown through this that it does all of the same things that I'm used to using on Final Cut Pro X on an iMac Pro, like a pro editing computer. Um, the only things that I wish, again, so the big things, the takeaways from today is I wish there was a way to click and drag and select everything instead of having to, what, click and control to do it? Click and command to, I wish there was a way to click and drag, select everything. I assume that that will come in the future. I have no problems with LumaFusion in any way, shape or form. I like that the iPad can be plugged into this hub. I've got access to the SD card, to the monitor, to everything. I love that it can now work with my magic mouse and my magic keyboard um, and all of the gestures still work. Like this stuff is impressive to me. This stuff is impressive to me and yes, if you wanted to go out there, you could do this. And here's the real big shocker, right? You could do all this without the iPad Pro. You could do most of this with the iPad. I would say we started out at the beginning of the video asking a question, can you use the iPad to replace a legitimate computer and use this as an editing tool? And the answer to that question, what? I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. I've been making YouTube videos for over three years now, and this is one of the fastest render times I've ever had in my life. I'm sold, I am 100% sold. So yes, you can absolutely do this. And we will do a follow-up video. I'm gonna use this solely for a week and we will do a follow-up video on how to do this. And if you'd like to see this, if you liked this video and you're like, man, I, that GH5 video he's talking about looks awesome. I'll leave a link to that GH5 in this one little spot we have here for me to put this. Click here to watch why the GH5 is now the perfect camera. Thanks for watching.